What up, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. I am Nicholas. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat BDG. I don't know if you can even see that logo, to be honest with you. But it's Friday, and every Friday we are doing a 2019 fantasy football mock draft using draft.com slash the draft app. And as I always do, I set up the mock draft on the draft app, and I invite 10 of my subscribers, audience members. So if you want to try to get into one of these videos, go on draft.com, sign up, and add me. My username is right there, Nick Ercolano. And, uh, and then I'll shoot you out an invite. I'll add you back after you add me. We're going to do high stakes today. High stakes draft. And by high stakes, as you can see, I have $4.90 in my account. So your man's is broke right now. We're going to do a $3 draft. We always do a $1 draft. But listen, we're going to up the stakes a little bit. We're going to go $3. And that's exactly what you get if you use my promo code BDGE. When you sign up on draft.com, you will get $3 to draft with. So anyone that used it will be able to use their $3 in this draft. Let's create it. These drafts fill in like 0.2 seconds. So we're going to create it on here and then we are going to use it or draft on the actual website itself. So I just sent out the invites. Let's see how quickly or not quickly this thing fills up. Yep, we are already filled up. Let's get this bread. So I'm, uh, I'm already on my second coffee of the day. It's Thursday morning. Hey, Georgie, you got in here. So did Scott. Oh, we got a couple squad members in here. Yeah, it's uh, it's Wednesday. It's Thursday. Uh, and this is my second cup of coffee already. It's like 10 a.m. This is a gigantic cup of coffee. I was out late last night. I ain't gonna lie. I was out till like 2 or 3 a.m. Supposed to get one drink. Next thing I know, we're fucking drinking Mexican revolvers, whatever that. You know what's the best part about a lot of bars in New York City? Is that they have fantastic names for all the drinks on their menu. And I drink margaritas literally everywhere I go. This one was called the Mexican Revolver. I'll tell you what. Shit fucked me up. Fucked me I cried and peed. I cried and peed. Anyways, uh, back to whatever I was saying. I need to fire myself, to be honest with you. I can't be doing that shit on a Wednesday night. I think what I'm going to do eventually is hire a CEO to run Big Dogs just so they can fire me. All right, let's talk fantasy. This is a 10-team mock draft. As you can see, I ended up in the eighth spot. It is half PPR. Draft.com is best ball. If you've never played best ball before, what that means is you don't actually make any in-season decisions, right? What you do is draft a big team, 18 players. And based on the team, no kickers, no defense, Draft.com automatically starts the best quarterback, the two best running backs, the three wide receivers, and the best tight end, as you can see right here. So you draft 18 players, all skill position players, based on whoever performs the best each week, they get thrown into the starting lineup. So uh, it's pretty much the same as season-long leagues when, in terms of drafting and where guys go off the board and stuff. Um, with a little bit of a caveat, like the boom-bust guys, you know, like the Deshaun Jacksons, the Tariq Cohens might go a little bit earlier. Ooh, that's an interesting one. So we have Melvin Gordon go off the board at 1-7. And I'm filming this about 10 minutes after the news dropped that he is holding out for a contract. Um, I'm getting a little bit higher on David Johnson. I'm not going to lie. I actually moved him up in my rankings, which are in my draft guide. Uh, he moved up above Joe Mixon as of this morning. So this is actually the first time I think I've drafted David Johnson in a long time in any of these drafts. But let's talk about Melvin Gordon. So Melvin, 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 Melvin Gordon said that he wants a contract extension. He wants that money. He wants to get paid. I respect it, man. These running backs, they get shit on. They get tackled 30 fucking times a week. Their body breaks down quickly and they don't get paid enough. He's still on his rookie contract. He needs that money. He needs that guaranteed money. You saw what Gurley got. You saw what a lot of these running backs got. Le'Veon Bell is going to get, or he did get. Um, let me make my pick real quick and we'll talk about it. We'll go with Odell here. So my thoughts are this, right? So he demands a trade. He said, give me a contract extension or trade my ass. Here's what I, here's the way I look at it. A lot of you guys are going to say like they should, you know, they shouldn't pay him. He's injury prone. You know, running backs don't have a lot of value in the NFL, in today's NFL. Um, and that that is true, right? You could look at Le'Veon Bell last year to James Conner as a case study. The way I see it, and I just tweeted this out a little while ago. So if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you're doing that, at Nick underscore BDGE. That offense runs through 
Melvin Gordon. They are not a high passing volume offense at all anymore. Rivers is not throwing the ball 40 times a game. They run through their running backs. The difference between those two situations, you know, Pittsburgh and and LA is that James Conner has legit workhorse size. They want to give Melvin Gordon the ball 20, 25 times a game. If he's not on the field, they don't have a guy behind him that can be a workhorse. I know a lot of people are going to get excited about Justin Jackson. Here's the thing, y'all. Justin Jackson is 193 pounds. So if you're thinking about Austin Eckler and you're like, ah, he's too small, like Justin Jackson is going to be the featured guy. Austin Eckler weighs more than Justin Jackson. So in no way am I saying that Austin Eckler is going to be the feature back here because he's not. I'd imagine it would be like a 50-50 split, you know, 12 touches each or something like that. But Justin Jackson is not going to be the featured guy. The point I'm getting to is this. I think they need to re-sign Melvin Gordon because they don't have a back that can take on that workload. I don't think using Eckler and Justin Jackson as a one-two punch throughout the entire season is going to get them to where they want to be. They have a small window right now, and that's Philip Rivers' next two to three years under contract is their Super Bowl run. They should lock down Melvin Gordon, give him some guaranteed money for that span. He's, what is he, 26 right now or something? Let me pull that up right quick. Um, let me mute Snacks' his ass. I apologize for any texts that pop up during here. I don't edit these videos, so a lot of the times when some embarrassing shit pops up and I feel like it's, oh my God, there it goes. Um, wow, that was one of the better ones that I've actually fucking seen. Okay, enough out of you. Thank God you can't see the name. Uh, Melvin Gordon is um, 26 years old. So lock him up for three years, give him some good guaranteed money for three years, and he'll hold up to the 29 and then dump his ass. Uh, and back to Eckler, right? Eckler is smaller in stature, right? 5'9", 199. Justin Jackson, you think he's a bigger back because he's taller. He's like six foot, but he's 193 pounds. So his actual BMI, look at his BMI. It's literally in the 0th percentile. So he's not built to be a featured work workload back at all. So the entire point I'm getting to is this. They're going to pay Melvin Gordon. In my humble ass opinion, I think they're going to come to the same conclusion that I'm coming to. And I think Melvin Gordon, because of this news, is going to end up falling in drafts. I was hoping he would fall to the 1-8 because this would be literally the perfect position. I need to... How do I... I'm going to put them on do not disturb. I apologize. My friends are out of control. Um, fuck. Whatever. So let's talk about some of the picks. So if Melvin Gordon keeps dropping to like the 1-9, 1-10 in these best ball leagues, I'm probably going to draft him all like every time. Uh, okay, so we're at the back half of the third round, and I haven't seen George Kittle fall this far in a minute. In a minute! Oh, we're also in a 10-team league, by the way, not a 12-team. Sometimes I do 12, sometimes I do 10. Um, so with the tight ends, I've stuck to the same principle basically since March. I was saying I wanted to leave the first three rounds with a top tight end. Then Kittle and Earth started going to the second round, which is where only I think Travis Kelsey should be going. And now we're seeing them fall back a little bit. So I'm okay drafting one of the elite tight ends in the third round. Um, and this goes for season long as well as best ball. George Kittle, listen, he was so young last year and his second year absolutely exploded. I understand people are like, people need to relax with the whole regression, regression, regression thing. Because you can regress efficiently, efficiencia. I don't know what the fuck I just said right there. Isn't there a word? You can regress from an efficiency standpoint, right? All right, let's get to the point here, Nicholas. Uh, but also put up a great fucking year. Like some people are just good at football. George Kittle is one of those guys, right? We People said it every year with Terry Kill. People said it with X, Y, and Z. And we see those players consistently... Um, play well, right? So I'm all in on, on George Kittle this year, but not for a second round price. I am one pick away and I really, really want Aaron Jones here. And I'll explain why in a second. I'm getting higher and higher and higher on Aaron Jones. And I actually need help from my audience. So I would love for you guys to help me out with a, uh, with a keeper scenario that I'm going to be in for the high stakes league that myself snacks an animal playing together. Let's go Aaron Jones. Uh, so Basically, the keeper rule that we play is that anyone drafted in the 10th round or later, the previous year, can be kept. I murdered those rounds last year. It was carry on in the 10th round. It was Aaron Jones in the 13th round. And then it was Robert Woods in the 14th round. So, it's half PPR. 
You start two running backs, you start two wide receivers and two flexes. If it was three wide receivers, I'd maybe consider Woods a little bit more seriously, but I don't think I could put him above Aaron Jones or carry on, even though he's going later than them. So it's between carry on losing a ninth round pick and Aaron Jones losing a 13th round pick. Earlier on in the offseason, I liked carry on a lot more. I am heating up to the idea of Aaron Jones in this offense. Uh, the reasons being, you know, I was nervous about them like running in a uh, running back by committee, which I still think is going to happen. And now I actually hope that happens. But I want Aaron Jones, and I think Aaron Jones is going to be, um, you know, give Aaron Jones 16 to 18 touches a game. No more than that. If he gets more than that, he I don't think he has the size to withstand a, a 20 to 25 touch workload. So give him 16 to 18 touches. Let him be the primary pass catching back. They have no time Montgomery. And we saw when Tymon got traded last year, Aaron Jones started becoming very heavily involved in the passing game before he got hurt. So I think we kind of see that same thing going into this year. And we're hearing reports already that they want to use their running backs in more of a pass catching, um, a pass catching role. Uh, so like it's Jamal Williams and Dexter Williams. Aaron Jones is the pass catcher there. So give him 13 to 14 carries a game, give him five targets a game. And I think we're going to see like something around, you know, end of season Kamara numbers, probably with a lower touchdown total, but like uh, efficiency wise, I think that's what we'll see. So I'm probably going to go with Aaron Jones there um, because of the three round discount, because that league is a 10 team league. And, you know, the smaller the league, obviously like a ninth round pick can still net you someone like a, a high upside running back, like a Royce Freeman or Jalen Samuels, definitely. Or like if Christian Kirk drops there or something like that, you know, so um, while a ninth round pick is not, it doesn't sound crazy, you know, in a smaller league that was, um, that is important. Uh, those eighth, ninth round picks. Especially when I'm in a super flex too, so I can get like my third quarterback or even my second quarterback there. Um, let's talk about some of the picks here. I love what George is, as much as it pains me to say, I love what George did there with the Woods, Tyree Kill, bike to bike picks. Oh God, I got sniped. Those are like the two guys I wanted right there. Lock it or, oh no, I already took a uh, tight end. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Wow, I hate all of the value on the board. I do like Calvin Ridley a lot. Um, I know Calvin Ridley is a little bit inconsistent, and I've talked about how I like him a lot this year. I think he's a great best ball pick, too, because he's someone that he's not necessarily boom or bust, although he was inconsistent last year. But again, I, I you know, I've said this a lot. I think he could be with Dirk Cutter coming over. I think he could be the Deshaun Jackson for this particular offense where he makes a lot of big plays because he has four, four, four speed, you know, and he's going to be a great deep threat for this Atlanta team who's going to be throwing the ball at a very high percentage because Dirk Cutter over his last five years is always like top eight in terms of pass percentage, in terms of deep ball attempts, um, just passing overall. So I think Calvin Ridley is going to see a lot of big games this year. And since you don't actually have to decide who to sit and start each week, you know, he it makes more sense in this, um, in this kind of format. So we are back to my pick at 6-3. I kind of wanted Kenyon Drake there, another guy I'm warming up to a little bit. And in the sixth round, I'm totally okay doing that. I have almost no Philip Lindsay shares. He keeps falling really, really far. Um, so I think I might actually take him here. Although I, I am a fan of taking Royce Freeman over Philip Lindsay this year based on where their ADP is. You know, like uh, Philip Lindsay per se was his ADP is like 45 to 48 range. Getting him in the sixth round at pick, uh, what was it? Like fifth, uh, I can't do math right now, but obviously that's way below his ADP. Uh, I'm, I'm totally fine grabbing in there. I mean, Philip Lindsay... When I say that I like Royce Freeman over Philip Lindsay because of the value, I don't, I wouldn't, that doesn't mean I take Royce Freeman over Philip Lindsay straight up. Like, Philip Lindsay's a fucking baller. I get it. He was a beast last year. I owned him in a lot of leagues, so I know that, right? And I have that little, you know, when, when you pick up a guy and you get ingrained in them, right? When you have your players on your fantasy team, you get emotionally involved with them, man. Like, you're like, that's my baby. Like, I invested in them early. I saw, I planted the seed, and I let the revenue come from that seed, right? So... Phil Lindsay was a guy like that for me. It was like week one. And I remember my waiver wire video. I was like, this is the top priority ad. This is the guy that you want to add. Someone can fucking go back and quote me on that. And uh, Lindsay was really good. But you don't necessarily ever see a guy his size sustain long-term success like that. He is not built to be a featured back in the NFL. And I think we saw him wear down both from an efficiency standpoint and, you know, he got injured at the end of the year. So... Um, I'm a little bit lower on Lindsay than his consensus ADP, but if he's going to start falling into the sixth or seventh round, there comes a point where he's just like, this guy is just too good. And that's the same thing with Chris Carson, you know, like 
a lot of these guys that hype up in the beginning of the offseason, right? I was talking about how, like, you know, you want to take Rashad Penny, you want to fade Chris Carson. Now it's getting to the point where Rashad Penny is going way earlier than Chris Carson. And Chris Carson's becoming a ridiculously good value. Like, Rashad Penny went at the 6-1, and we are into the seventh round, and Chris Carson is still on the board. So if you're going to give me Chris Carson in the seventh round, like, eventually he's going to start becoming the value. So when I talk about a lot of these guys that I love early on in the year, that that's not, you know, black and white. That's based on the value of where they're going. So you always want to watch these trends. And that's why I do these mock drafts for you guys. So you can start seeing where a lot of them go in drafts. Um, and that's why I suggest you guys do this. Not even trying to pitch you, but legit. Like if you throw $10 into your draft account, you will be able to mock draft, you know, 10 times over the next month and a half. And you will be ready for your draft. You'll see the changes and the trends that happen within a lot of these drafts. And you'll see where guys are rising. You'll see where guys are falling. Whereas Chris Carson was a fifth round pick. Rashad Penny used to be an eighth or ninth round pick. Now Penny's going in the sixth. Carson's starting to go in the seventh. It's crazy. And I know a lot of these drafts are my subscribers. So things that I say probably influence a lot of what they do, which is great because now I can get a guy like Tariq Cohen where I fucking hate him in season long, right? I would never pick him in a season long league in in the fifth, sixth round where he's normally going. But if y'all are going to let him drop to me in best ball, I'm all in on that because he's going to have plenty of boom weeks, right? Um, But I don't have to choose when to do that. And I already have four running backs. I normally don't go so running back heavy, but I have been all in on a lot of these younger wide receivers. Let's talk about my my Scott Fishbowl League. If any of you guys are in the Scott Fishbowl, it's a fantasy league that's put together by a guy named Scott Fish, and it's huge. It's 1,200 teams, basically every fantasy football analyst in there. And um, 1,200 leagues, 1,200 teams broken up into 100 different leagues, 12 team leagues. And the scoring settings are crazy, right? It is uh, half PPR, half point per first down. Tight ends are premium, premium. So they get a full point per first down as well as a full point per... um... Oh man, I hope Aaron Rodgers falls to me here. Shit as well as a full point per first down. Did I say that? I don't remember. Full PPR, full point per first down, four tight end. So it's very tight end premium. Bonus points are crazy. Bonus points, you get five full bonus points for 50 rushing yards, 50 receiving yards, and uh, come on, Aaron Rodgers, fall to me, you mother... 50 receiving yards or 300 passing yards. And it's super flex. I'll get back to that in a sec after my pick, and I'll explain why I want Rodgers. Fuck yeah. So, Rodgers, um, although you start one quarterback in this league, guys... The reason people preach, and I, you know, I, I bring this up every week to help you guys, you want to grab one of these top tier quarterbacks within, you, I usually use a sixth or seventh round pick on one of these guys, and you want to make sure you do that. The reason you like fading quarterbacks in one quarterback leagues, right? The reason that you use a late round pick on them rather than an earlier pick, on, even on these elite guys like Rodgers, Luck, whatever, is because you can stream the waiver wire. In best ball leagues, you don't get to do that. Right? You want to make sure that you have an elite option at the position. You could draft you know, two high upside guys. You could draft Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen in a seasonal league because if you know one of them hits their ceiling, you have a great quarterback one on your team. If they both bust, you drop them and you grab another high upside guy off the waiver like Mitch Trubisky, who's like the 20th quarterback off the board. In this scenario, you don't get that option. You can't hit the waiver wire. So although it's a one quarterback league, you want to have a very good option there. So I always suggest to the people, grab someone in the top tier. I probably won't ever get Patrick Mahomes because he's still going quarterback one, um, like in the fourth, fifth round. I'm not sure where he went here, but if we go back and look, he goes in like the fourth, fifth round, and uh, that's too early for me for a quarterback because I don't see him in a ridiculously much higher tier than Luck, Rodgers, Watson. I see all of them in the same tier together. So I grab them all together in the 6th, 7th, 8th round, whichever one falls to me, which happens to be a lot of Rodgers. I think I own a huge amount of Rodgers. But this is my team for the Scott Fishbowl, and I'm actually loving the shit out of my team. So in the first round... Fuck. My bad, y'all. In the first round, I went with Travis Kelsey at the 107. I went into this draft with one strategy... It was that if Kelsey falls to me at the 107, I'm grabbing him, no questions asked. Because full point per first down, full point per reception, while the other positions only get half point. Kelsey last year with this scoring setting 
was the overall wide receiver one. He outperformed every wide receiver by a pretty large margin and was almost the number one overall player. So you might be like, eh, Kelsey first round, but he scores in a ridiculous amount of points in this league. So locked up Kelsey, second round, Devontae Adams fell to me at the 206. Y'all know how I feel about Devontae Adams. I think he's on the cusp of an absolutely monster year. Last year was only the beginning. He only played in 15 games, still put up put up 13 touchdowns while Aaron Rodgers only threw 25 touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers is going to throw 35 to 40 touchdowns next year, and Devontae Adams is going to flirt with 16 to 18 pa- uh, receiving touchdowns. Um, I, put, I feel pretty confident in that. So I think Devontae Adams is going to be the wide receiver one. So I got him in the second round. Andrew Luck was still on the board in the third round, which is fantastic because it's super flex, and it's five bonus points for every 300 passing yards. And he had that streak of like eight or nine games where he did that consecutively. And I think this offense is just going to be unbelievable. Oh, fuck, I'm on the board, huh? Oh, Lord. Marquez. Okay, so I've been grabbing Marquez Valdez Scantling in nearly every like ninth, tenth round of my drafts. And I did that here. Um, so after Andrew Luck, I went with Marlon Mack in the fourth, which I fucking love because I'm not going to be able to, I'd love playing with guys that aren't my subscribers and my followers because they don't like the same guys that I like. So it lets me have a guy like Marlon Mack where I faded the running back position, which is a bold move for the first three rounds. Marlon Mack is a top eight, top 10 guy for me. You know, that's obviously my subjective view, but I absolutely love Marlon Mack. So to get him as my RB one in round four, fantastic. Um, and then I piled up Brandon Cooks as my wide receiver two in the fifth round. I thought he fell to me. Kyler Murray in the sixth round. Kyler Murray in this, this might have been the absolute steal of the draft. Mm, who are my quarterbacks? I might grab another quarterback here. Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz and Kyler are both on the board. So what are we doing here? Uh, ah, fuck. I'm not going to be able to get I should have stacked. Ah, I did stack Aaron Rodgers at Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Um, I'm all in on Carson Wentz, so I keep I, I keep stacking them, and I, I'm not sure if this is an optimal move or not. I'm going to need Steve. I'm going to need you to look into this. Do you think it's a bad move or a good move to stack a guy like Rodgers in the 7th and then... Or is that in the 8th? I mean, if I get him at value, if I get Rodgers in the 8th and Wentz in the 10th, I'm fine with that. But I'm not sure if I should go with like Rodgers in the 7th and then wait till maybe the 12th for like a Dak Prescott or just grab Wentz because I have Wentz as like a top 5 quarterback. So... Um, I'm not really sure. Steve, I'm going to need some numbers on that. Steve is Steve is doing my best ball uh, blog write-ups. If you go to bigdogsfantasy.com and you're looking for more insight, more you know edges on how to actually win your best ball leagues, every week Steve puts out a best ball specific piece of content on the blog. No video, but uh, he does some cool stuff. So this week he was breaking down the best ball championship MVP. So on draft.com, what they do is open up a guaranteed prize pool, which is pretty... F- Awesome. I haven't entered any yet, but later in the summer, I'll enter a few where it's a $25 buy-in. Oh, they have a $5 entry too. Cool. And they have a winner takes a million dollars. And obviously you need to have a ridiculously, you know, ridiculously ridiculous team in order to compete for that. So basically he looked at um, the data from draft, which they sent over to us generously. And he broke down like the percentage of players that were on those best ball championship teams. I hope you can see this and my head is not blocking over. But um, Patrick Mahomes was owned in almost 38% of leagues that won the best ball championship or that were up in the, you know, whatever. Um, because he was drafted in the 8th to 10th round. Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook. Oh, this is interesting. This is a great fucking article. So he basically puts who was the MVP last year and who he projects to be the MVP this year. So he goes 2018, 2019. So... Uh, really good article. Make sure you go check that out on the site. Make sure you are going to follow Mr. Steve on the Twitter as well. Where are you at, Steve? Steve Mullen, there you go. At SR Mullen1979. This is my man. Oh, we got him over 100 followers. Let's fucking go. Cool. And he, he has his own YouTube channel as well. So you can go check that out. Um, Go to his Twitter page and his videos and his content are right here. Um, so he's the best ball guy for BDG at the moment outside of myself because he breaks down the numbers. I talk the big facts. I talk common sense, but he backs it up with the, with, with the actual big facts. So with MVS, I grabbed MVS in this league as well. I got him all the way in, I think it was round 11. So I did stack him with Devontae Adams, but I'm fine. because I really think MVS is going to be the wide receiver two here. They're already saying he, he is a starter above Jerome Allison. He's running on wide receiver two sets. They do run a lot of three wide receiver sets in Green Bay. 
But even if, if he's on the field for 10% or 15% more plays than John Allison is, that gives you a huge edge. And being a wide receiver two on the outside, the average depth of target for a guy on the outside as opposed to the slot receiver in Allison is also going to give you a huge edge. And he makes sense being on the outside because he's he runs a 4-3-7 40-yard dash. He can separate. And he was one of the top separators among all wide receivers last year. So we still have three wide receivers. Let me see if there's any value at the board on tight end. Uh, you know what? I kind of li- eh, no, I went with Kittle, so I don't really like taking another tight end here. I, I, I'm all in on, on Larry Fitz in the 11th, 12th round as well. Oh, they took David Njoku. Whatever. That was going to be my second pick if I didn't get Fitz. I timed out by accident because I'd too, be too busy fucking spitting facts at y'all. Also, yo, if you guys are uh, enjoying the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up on the video. All you got to do is scroll down a little bit, hit that thumbs up button. Let's me know that you are liking these t- types of videos. Um, and drop a comment what kind of videos you want to see throughout the rest of the summer because I don't have my entire content schedule planned out. So I take a lot of the ideas that you guys want to, you know, that you guys want to see that you guys suggest. So drop one of those comments down below. Let me know what you want to see and I will try to mix them into the content schedule that I have. But yeah, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And Larry Fitz fell to me. Beautiful. Uh, man, I can't believe you would take Nikhil Harry or Dante Moncrief over Fitz. Fitch is, Fitch is going to be great this year in Arizona, man. If they really have a bit, as big of an uptick in plays as we're projecting them to, um, then Fitch is going to be a great beneficiary to that, along with Christian Kirk, man. I'm excited. What was I going to say? Back to the team. Yeah, so basically after Mac, I knew I went heavy on wide receivers because you start three wide receivers and only two running backs. So you need to have a little more depth at wide receiver. And plus, I can play them in my flex. So I got all high upside running backs behind Marlon Mack, right? Royce Freeman, Rashad Penny, both have chances to be the workhorse in their offense, depending on what happens to their starter. Both of their starters are banged up this offseason already. Um, Both of them have very good athletic profiles and have workhorse size. So I went upside at running back. That's obviously going to be my weak point, but there's always the waiver wire in here, right? There will be waiver wire pickups that I can use weekly to fill the RB2 role if I need to. And again, this kind of uh, league gives you bonus for the yardage. So Deshaun Jackson, if I play him in one of my two flex spots, I'm not sure if there's two or three, to be honest, but if he goes over hundred yards, which he's definitely capable of doing, that's 10 extra bonus points. So that's huge for me. So I went with guys that I think are going to break out in QT, Christian Kirk, Marquez, along with, you know, Deshaun Jackson is a veteran who I think um, with Carson Wentz is going to have tons of big games. I absolutely love I, I love this team. If I would ever draft a team like this in season long outside, this was the best draft I've had in a long time, I think, in like years, to be honest, season long. And behind Kelsey, I grabbed Goddard in the 12th round, which I'm super fucking excited about. Realistically, unless Ertz gets down or goes down, Goddard is never going to be in this lineup because I'm not going to use him at tight end with Kelsey there. And I probably won't flex him because he won't put up enough weekly production for me to want to put him over one of these wide receivers. But if Ertz goes down, Given that this is a tight end premium league, or, uh, Goddard almost becomes a league winner for me. God, I fucking love this team. This team is so good. I don't know how they let me draft him. I didn't actually have to think about a pick until round seven. And I'm on the clock. Who do we like here? Uh, I'm probably going to fade running back because I went with a lot of running backs early. Um, so I'm going to keep piling up wide receivers. And I really like Funches. I think he's going to be the wide receiver two there. Both tight ends there are banged up right now, both Ebron and Jack Doyle. Jack Doyle said he's not rushing his recovery. That's a little bit uh, alarming to me, right? He had the, whatever he was dealing with throughout the offseason. If you're not like saying that you're close to 100% right now, that's scary to me. Um, We're like mid-July and I want to see you like really being active and, and like full go by the time August hits. So it's a situation to monitor. Eric Ebron scares me too because he's coming back from hip surgery. We don't know when he's going to be 100%. So if one of these guys is out, Devin Funches is going to be the beneficiary in the red zone. And I could, if he ends up with eight touchdowns this year, would not surprise me in the least bit. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Devin Funches, especially in the 13th round. That's fantastic. Again, this is a 10-team league. So I have my two quarterbacks. I will, especially when I get guys like Rodgers and Wentz, there's no need to draft a third quarterback. Um, with my tight ends, I'm pretty happy about Njoku and Kittle. So I definitely won't be drafting a third tight end. Uh, what I will do is kind of look at my roster and see which parts of the roster need, um, more depth. And that's way quicker on the app. The app is super aesthetic. So I would definitely go, um, download the app if you're looking at it. And I actually do need some running back depth and I absolutely love Deion Lewis this year, man. I've been preaching about him. He's one of my sleepers in my draft guide. If you haven't copped yet, Big Dog's draft guide. 
DraftKingsSportsBook.com. The reviews are in. The reviews are spicy. The reviews are five stars, baby. If you've copped the draft guide, let me know down below what you think about it. Let the other people know that it will probably help them in their leagues. Deion Lewis is one of probably like 15 names in the draft guide, which is, again, on BigDogDraftGuide.com. It's live. It's accessible through phone, laptop, computer, whatever. Um, use it on your draft day. It will be updated throughout the entirety of the summer. So if you are looking to invest into a draft guide, look no further than big dogs. We teach you how to be a better fantasy football player. We don't just give you the players that I like or dislike. We have tons of exclusive stuff on there that will literally help you become better at researching all the big facts that I bring up in the video. I, I, I show you the resources that I use to find them. And I want to be, make you become a better fantasy player, y'all. That's what we're here. That's what, that's what we're about. Um, and speaking on that, I'm getting on a podcast later today, which I'm not sure what I'm going to put on my channel, but the Candlestick Podcast or something, I forget what the name of the podcast is, I apologize, uh, I will be getting interviewed on today, and this is the show sheet. It's all about like the brand and stuff, so if you're into that branding kind of stuff, if you're into like the marketing and the business behind behind it, it's all about explaining big dogs um, and kind of the different you know business ventures I see myself going into as the brand continues to build and uh i know a lot of you guys are probably new to my channel if you do enjoy that kind of stuff i had a a series on my channel it's a playlist behind the business of fantasy football where i interviewed a lot of the top heads in the industry um you know the three guys from the fantasy footballers matt Harmon from yahoo brad evans from yahoo uh, a lot of the big names and we didn't talk any player analysis we only talked about you know, their come-ups, their, um, their innovations within the industry, just totally from a branding, business, and marketing perspective. So if that kind of stuff interests you, right, like entrepreneurial kind of things, that is a playlist on my channel that I highly, highly recommend you check out. It's, it's my favorite pieces of content to produce. So I'm excited to get on that, that podcast later today, and uh, I will put that content on my channel. So stay tuned. Also, vlog dropping. Might have already dropped last night if you're watching this on Friday. New vlog behind the scenes. Check it out. Check it out. <clears throat> okay, so, you know, I'm not necessarily one that likes these pass catching backs, but I do uh, get them. Fuck, I missed out. I keep timing out because I'm talking to y'all for too long. You took fucking cream, hunt. I'm done. I would stand up and walk away, but I'm actually in my boxers right now. That's the perks of working from home. I'm hella serious. Y'all didn't know about that tattoo, did you? I look professional up. Actually, I don't even look professional. I'm telling you, like someone needs to fucking fire me. If you want to take over as a CEO of BDGE, I'm fucking more than hiring. I will sign the papers tomorrow night. Oh, tonight. I don't even know why I said tomorrow night. So, uh, the team right now. Aaron Rodgers and Wentz at quarterback. David Johnson, Aaron Jones, Tariq Cohen, Philip Lindsay, Deion Lewis, Kareem Hunt at running back. I'm so mad about Kareem Hunt. I won't, I won't be drafting him anywhere. Don't draft Kareem Hunt this year in redraft, please. No business doing so. Six running backs. I usually end up with seven or eight wide receivers, two and two at the tight end quarterback position because you only need to start one. So if you get top tier guys, you don't have to invest in the position. And uh, however many running back spots are left after that. Down here, uh, a lot of the guys I've been targeting are... I haven't been targeting any Miami players. None of these guys. Uh, I like David Moore. I also like... Uh, okay, we'll take a different Seattle receiver. I really got to get on my shit. But wide receiver-wise, uh, we have... Let's see. I got to scroll over my name to click on it. I feel like I went wide receiver early, but I also like feel like I'm probably lying. Okay, we went Odell, Calvin Ridley, Marquez, uh, Fitz, Devin Funchess, DK. So I think these, these like, the rounds 8 through 12 is so good for stacking upside wide receivers. These sophomore wide receivers, um, I have a really good video coming out on Monday, which is, the t I did the top running back sleepers for this year a couple days ago. Top wide receiver sleepers is going to be coming out this upcoming Monday. Um, I talked a lot about these sophomore wide receivers and how you can absolutely kill the value there from rounds 8 through 12 with guys like Kiki QT, Christian Kirk, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, um, you know, even like Cortland Sutton, who's going to be the one there. There's so much upside there. And there are a lot of breakout guys who are sophomore wide receivers. I went back and I, I dropped a lot of facts in the video about, you know, how many guys each year... Um, 
finish as a top 18 wide receiver that are sophomores, right? So we try to get some percentages. I think it was, I'm actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you watch that video to find out for yourselves. Um, but we break that down. And then we look at like draft capital of who those sophomore wide receivers were to get a better idea of who the guys this year might be the ones that break out. So we take a look at, you know, diving in depth again, trying to teach y'all more about fantasy and, and looking at the right things as opposed to just listening to people's player analysis and shit. I am sweating. I'm sweating. I don't know if it's because it's hot and I have to turn the AC off. George, where is my bladeless fan, bro? George, I need this from you. Stop drafting Emmanuel Sanders in the 16th round, too. He doesn't have an Achilles. You're really making me angry. Two different things in a five-second period just piss me off, George. You're pissing me off. Why did four Dolphins just go off the board right there? Kalen Blage, Kenny Stills, Mike Gusecki, Devontae Parker. You all realize this is going to be one of the worst fucking offenses in the NFL, right? Okay, other guys I like. I really like Randall Cobb, and I really like Antonio Callaway as uh, later round picks here. I've been going with a lot of Antonio Callaway. Don't forget, man, Antonio Callaway was one of like the best wide receiver prospects last year. I know he dealt with a lot of drops, but he was like three or four catches away on deep passes from having a monster season. 4-4-1 four, four, speed. He is still going to be the wide receiver two here on the outside in this Baker Mayfield offense. Baker Mayfield throws the ball deep a ton. I know Odell's going to get a lot of those, but Antonio Callaway is going to have a handful of games this year where he catches 50-yard touchdowns. You can mark that down. Mark it in the damn books. And when you're tethered to Baker Mayfield, who is a ridiculously accurate downfield thrower, I'm going to show you, deep passing. He's a voluminous slash accurate downfield thrower. This is PFF, by the way. This is their elite package, so this is not free. I believe I have a promo code down below um, in the description if you're if you're interested in getting their package, which is a fantastic paid package. I don't usually try to pitch you guys on paid packages, but PFF is one that I do use and I really like. So we're going to go with um, Antonio Callaway there. I like David Moore as a late-round option, but I, I'm not even sure he's going to be the starter. And I, I tend to stay away from guys who, one, are on suspension. Two, we don't know if they're even going to make the roster. Like, we have no idea. Three, like Alexander Madison in the 18th, I'm okay with that. But he could end up be playing 0% of the snaps, right? And I tend to try to not draft guys like that. Randall Cobb, we know, is going to be the slot receiver in, in Dallas. So at worst, he's giving you games that are like 4 for 40. I'm okay with that in the 18th round. Um... So Baker Mayfield, third most accurate deep passing quarterback last year while throwing the ball deep at the sixth highest rate in the NFL. He attempted, let's see, 72 deep passes while only playing in 14 games. So if you're looking at deep pass, uh, passes per game, um, if you're looking at deep passes per game, that's a high rate. And Antonio Callaway is a fantastic deep option if he can fucking put some glue on his hands and reel in a couple. I think drops, you know, drops are an issue for some guys, but I also think a lot of times they're unlucky in a sense. So I think if luck kind of bounces back towards Antonio Callaway, we're looking at a guy who's going to have, like I said, a handful of games um, with 40 to 50 yard touchdown passes. So I like Antonio Callaway as a late round guy. Um, I like all these guys. Gio Bernard is another one that I think is going to see, you know, eight touches a game maybe. And uh, if something happens to Mixon, who, you know, has had his issues with injuries, Joe Bernard is basically an RB1 in your lineup for that. Debo Samuel, I don't hate either. I think he could be a nice possession receiver. Trey Quinn, completely off Trey Quinn. Uh, I know there's a lot of hype around him. Like people are like, oh, he's the starting slot wide receiver in Washington. Like what the fuck was that? What does that mean? What is this, New England? Like Washington, like what did Jameson Crowder do? Nothing. And Trey Quinn like has proven nothing. So it's not even like we're seeing Jameson Crowder like we're hoping that he we're hoping that Trey Quinn is Jamison Crowder like is that really what you want on your team a guy a poor man's Jamison Crowder we'll pass on that I'm sorry I was out of control today I uh I, I tend to get anxious when I'm hung over especially when I have to talk into the camera for like 60 straight minutes but I love you guys for joining me I hope uh that you enjoyed the video come draft with me go to draft.com go to the draft app in the app store they have it on google they have it on uh, ios Use promo code BDGE when you sign up. Throw $10 in there. I will be sending out invites all week. I open up like 10 different drafts throughout the week that are not filmed that I just draft with you guys so you could practice with me. You could steal all my damn players because that's all you guys do anyways. And uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. So thank you if you stuck around for this long. I love you. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And check out the rest of the content on the channel if, uh, if you are new. I'll see you all tomorrow for the Patreon live stream. Peace.